Hello, my name is Mike Morton with Keysight Technologies, and today we're going to be talking about waveform licensing using the 5 and 50 pack waveform licenses for Keysight's vector signal generators. Waveform licensing enables you to license waveforms that you generate and download from any Signal Studio application for unlimited playback in a signal generator. Each licensing option, 221 through 229, allows you to permanently license up to five waveforms each. Or options 250 through 259 allows you to permanently license up to 50 waveforms each of your choice. So waveform licensing is targeted at manufacturing customers wanting a low price solution to permanently playback waveforms created using the N7600B Signal Studio applications. Now the N7600B Signal Studio applications contains many, many different model numbers of Signal Studios in the B series. They're, they range from GSM, CDMA, LTE, WiMAX, Digital Video Broadcast, Signal Studios. And you can use any of those with these waveform licenses. However, there are two of them that it does not work with. And that is if you're using the Pulse Building Signal Studio, or the multi-tone distortion signal studio, and that's the N7620B or the N7621B for multi-tone distortion and noise power ratio measurements. So they are not applicable. If you're considering using either one of those two, stop here and do not use waveform licensing with them. If you do have a need for, for uh, waveform licensing, each option 22X provides five available slots, and option 25X license provides up to 50 available slots where you can add and play waveforms for a trial period of 48 hours per slot. During this time, you can replace the waveform any number of times until you are satisfied with it. After the trial period expires, though, the waveform in the slot is no longer playable until the slot is locked for permanent playback. However, you can replace the waveform in the slot with another waveform of your choice before locking that slot. Each waveform slot comes with a 48-hour trial license for the N76XXB Signal Studio applications for unlimited creation and playback during that 48-hour period. The waveform can be locked for permanent playback at any time during or even after the 48-hour Signal Studio use period. What happens when your 48 hours expires and you haven't perfected your waveform? Go ahead and then select the next waveform slot and you now have a new additional 48 hours to lock the waveforms from the current or the previous slot. So how does all this work? You can either purchase your 5 or 50 pack option either at the time that you configured the product and we built the unit and shipped it to you. If, that, if that's the case, those options will be pre-installed at the factory. If you have an existing signal generator that you would want to retrofit it, you can retrofit these options as normal instrument options. And if for a five pack, you'd order the, like on the previous slide, 221, what you would receive is a certificate and you follow the directions on the certificate to install that option. Once that's on there, you will then have access to your five waveforms or 50 waveforms or more, it depends on how many you ordered. It is also useful to know that to license additional waveforms that exceed the number permitted by your 5 or 50 pack, you can purchase another 5 or 50 pack that you do not already own. For example, if you already own option 250, which is the 50 pack, and you needed more waveforms, you can purchase the next option up, which is 251, for an additional 50 slots, totaling the 100 waveform slots. Of course, if you add all the options, 250 through 259, you, it would provide a, a maximum of 500 waveforms. And then on the five-pack side, purchasing all of those would provide up to 45 waveform slots. So once you've got the option installed, you basically download and run your Signal Studio software. You can create your waveforms and playback during, the, during that if you're using a, a Signal Studio trial, like a 30-day trial for a particular model number, that works fine for trialing them out. You go in and use the 48-hour use period uh, in your waveform slots. So you download it, your specific Signal Studio application, you use the 30-day trial, 
and or the 48 hour trial license for each waveform slot. Each five pack has five individual 48 hour trial licenses. And once again, 48 hours, what if your 48 hours are up before perfecting your waveform? except the next waveform slot. You now have the next 40 hours to lock down the current slot as well as the previous one. Once you've created the waveform and you've downloaded it to it, you can download it in many ways. You could either use a USB stick if you've got a uh, USB port on your vector generator, um, or you can download it with GPIB LAN or directly from the Signal Studio itself. You can accept the trial and play it out. You have to do that from the front panel if you're using the 48 hour trial. And then try it out and if you need to make adjustments, you got the 48 hours of the trial or, or the 30 day trial, whatever you're licensed for, that becomes your trial period. And then you can play that out and make adjustments and re-download it again and replace it until you get it right and then, and then you can lock the waveform down, in which case at that point it becomes permanent. It's also useful to know that in the user's guide, and in other places, we highly recommend that after your waveform is locked down in any of the waveform slots, that you back up your waveform. You should back it up to the internal non-volatile memory of the vector generator, and you should also copy it out to some other media type, either a USB port or FTP it onto a, a PC for backing it up. That's in case the, the vector generator ever needs servicing and it lost its memory, for example you have a backup of your waveform so that it can be restored upon return of the unit from service. Or if someone goes and deletes it unexpectedly off, off the unit, or someone in instrument security cleared your unit for, for security reasons, you have a backup in safekeeping on, on your PC, for example, or other media types. So to demonstrate what we have here on my vector signal generator, which I am remote desktoped into, you can go to the, I'm going to the utility instrument info option, diagnostic info, where you'll see that my unit contains actually a 221, which is a five pack and a 250, which is a 50 pack. And so what you'll find in there is five waveform slots available under mode, dual ARB, more, waveform licensing. And as you can see here, you can see the signal generator provides the waveform slot, the file name, licenses used, one of 55, and the status of each waveform slot. And as you scroll down, you know, I've got quite a few here. You'll see I should have exactly 55, and there they are. So how does this work? Basically, I have here a the N7617B, which is the signal studio for wireless LAN. And I have here, I've connected to the generator, and I've created a, basically it's the default 802.11G advanced, which is just BPSK modulation. And if I go ahead and download that to the generator, a message will pop up saying the target instrument does not have a valid license. Without a valid license, an instrument cannot play back the downloaded waveform. Do you still want to download the waveform anyway? Basically say yes or okay here. So we're downloading the waveform indicated at the lower left corner of the Signal Studio. Once it's done, okay, now download is exceeded. But we'll see when we go into the, to the generator, uh, going under mode, dual ARB, select waveform, here's my waveform name. Um, up here in Signal Studio, I gave it a name, Wireless LAN G100 microseconds. So here's my waveform. If I select it and try to select it and turn the ARB on, I will still get an error, 703, feature not supported. That's because there still is no license to play that waveform. And why is there no license? It's because you have to accept the 48 hour trial license for the waveform slot. So what we'll do is we'll go back into the waveform licensing menu and you'll notice my waveform slot number one says lock required. Lock required means that the trial period for the slot has expired, but the slot has not been locked. And it's also useful to note the slot can be cleared or replaced with a different waveform, but the waveform cannot be played until the slot is locked. A trial period is no longer available. So 
what I'll do is in order to play this waveform, I'm going to use uh, waveform slot number two. So I'll highlight it down and I'll add the waveform to the first available slot and the waveform will be the WLAN-G. I'll say add waveform. At this point it becomes, it begins the trial period. So I can play this waveform now for the next two days. And basically all I'll need to do is turn the ARB on now. And it is playing the waveform. Now I want to make a change to my, I've played it out, I've looked at it, and I go, oh, I wanted the idle interval of my waveform to be 200 microseconds, for example. Right now I'm at a 100 microseconds. So I make the change in Signal Studio. I'll probably give it a new name, maybe 200 microseconds. I'll download and play it. Say OK. OK, the download has succeeded. So I'll go and select it. That's just a, well, you know, it was in remote because of the connectivity. Okay, if I play that, feature not supported. You have to each time go into the mode dual ARB more waveform licensing and then replace waveform in the slot. Go down to the 200 microsecond version, replace waveform, and then I can play the waveform. So now it's playing the 200 microsecond waveform. Once I have perfected my waveform, you can do this any number of times by downloading waveforms and adding them to this trial slot. And you get and once you get the waveforms the way you want them, and they're working right and everything, then it's time to go ahead and lock them down. So what I think I'll do is let's suppose the 100 microsecond idle interval was was fine for uh, slot number one. What I can do is go up to that that waveform slot number one. And I will replace a waveform. I'll use the 100 microsecond idle interval. I'll replace the waveform so it's in that. So remember, I said you could you could add waveforms to slots that weren't locked, but still the trial was unavailable for playback. Um, what, this is just what I just did. Um, the 100 microsecond idle interval waveform. I just put it in that slot. I still can't play it because I have to lock it. And once it's locked, it becomes permanent. It literally becomes permanent on this signal generator. So what I'll do is go ahead and do that. I'll lock that waveform in slot. And it gives you some warnings here. Because I have not stored it, it'll request waveform backup required. Waveform cannot be licensed until it's copied to non-volatile memory. So it's forcing you to uh, at least go to the internal storage in the uh, non-volatile memory. So I'll go ahead and click the backup waveform. Uh, into the internal non-volatile memory button. And then it's giving me the lock warning. Once a waveform is locked, it will use up an available license slot and it cannot be unlocked. Be sure you want to lock this waveform. And, and then it reminds you to also keep a backup copy of the waveform elsewhere in case you delete all files in internal storage. So I'll go ahead and confirm the locking waveform. And it is now locked. I can play this waveform as many times as I want now. So if I go back to mode, dual ARB, select waveform, I can choose it from here. I can now play it with no errors. At this point, I can continue working on my 200 microsecond idle interval. Say I want to change the modulation format or something or, or make the idle interval or add a MAC address or anything I want to do. To in, within Signal Studio to make the waveform the way it will be for final test. Keep in mind, it's, it'll be permanent once you lock it. I can download it for the next two days, any iteration of what I want to use here, and then lock it down at that point in time once I have perfected the waveform and using the same method. For more information on waveform licensing, please see your Vector Signal Generator's user's guides. These guides actually have quite a bit of information in them. If I pull up the 
EXGs and MXGs. These are usually found in the uh, basic digital operation when you have a baseband generator section, usually towards the bottom. And there's several pages on, on how to use it. Thanks for watching.